late May and my apple orchard is beginning to experience what we call the June drop. Um, the June drop probably does happen in June if you live uh, in the northern tier, but here in the Bay Area, uh, June drop comes in May. What I mean by June drop is the time when the apple trees and the pear trees begin to thin themselves. Fruit will literally begin to drop from the plants and uh, land on the ground around the trees. Most of the fruit that falls is usually infected by a codling moth. That's the apple worm. Uh, we sprayed for them earlier using spinosad and oil, but uh, don't always get every fruit and some of them do pick up the worm. Uh, those usually are laying on the ground and they might be found up in the trees. So it's the time that we would go through and thin the clusters in our apples so we don't get so crowded and we'll get a little bit bigger fruits. Um, and in the process we will take down and pick up every infected fruit uh, that might be around the tree. That is the ones that have the worm in them. Uh, we will also look for a disease called fire blight because it's present now and it's time to prune it out of the trees. So when I say it's a June drop, um, this is what I'm referring to. We end up with little apples laying on the ground under the trees. Some of them just naturally shed because they were too crowded. Others, though, will be infected by the codling moth. As I said, the June drop will signal the time that we go into our trees and begin to thin fruit clusters. Now here's a nice branch on a Cox Orange Pippin. It's loaded up good. And now I'm going to go in here and we see here got a little weak fruit. I'm going to pick that one out. Here's another one. I'm going to take that fruit out of the tree. Um, go on up here. Here's another weak one. Take that now out. I'm keeping an eye out here uh, as I'm doing this for, uh, for worm damaged fruit. So far I'm not seeing any. The absence of worm damaged fruit in the trees is a good thing. That means that I was uh, effective with my spray program. But I finally did find one right here. There's a little brown spot on the side of that apple. And so that is prime candidate for removal from this tree. Uh, let's see, okay, here's a couple of punies right here. I'm going to take those off too. Uh, oh, I didn't want to let go. There we go. By removing the weak fruit, we will end up with much larger fruit. Damage from a worm looks like that. Right there. You see that brown gunk that's coming out of the bottom of this piece of fruit. That ejecta is known as frass, uh, otherwise known as worm poo poo. And so we have a larva of the moth that's boring into this fruit. Uh, let's see if we can cut it open here and have a better look at it. So here I've cut the apple open and you can see uh, right there the little brown tunnel from the worm and actually the worm is right there at the end of the tunnel. That little thing that I cut in two by accident. He's very tiny. So he's a goner. But um, These are the apples that you definitely want to thin out of your tree uh, during the June drop and when you take them down don't put them in the compost heap unless you can completely grind them because usually our heaps don't hit the good 160 degrees and so the uh, the worms will end up emerging from the heap anyway. Uh, take these, either bury them up to a foot and a half on the ground or sack them up, toss them in the trash or throw them into the municipal composting or, or boil them all or do something. It's going to stop the worms from coming out because if you don't get the worms to go in through cycle in the first batch, you won't have the second wave of worms later on in the summer. Well, thinning apples that were damaged by the codling moth, I'm also on the lookout for fire blight. That's this disease that's caused brown leaves in the top of my tree here. I'm going to have to go after this and prune at it. One thing you want to make sure you do is always take away about 12 inches of healthy growth below the last sign of the fire blight. So I've got a pole lopper and it looks like I got fire blight up in the top of this tree here. I'm picking off oh maybe about 10-12 uh, inches of good wood below that sign right there. Put the lopper on, cut that piece out. Let's have a look at that thing here. Here's the piece I cut down. You can see the brown stuff in it. Uh, it kind of looks like it was burned by a blowtorch. 
That's why they call it fire blight. Um, now it's really important when you take this out of your tree that you're going to go ahead and clean your shear between every cut. Uh, rubbing alcohol would be my, my preferred material. Now, it's very important when you cut fire blight from a tree that the shear is cleaned between every cut. My favorite would be isopropyl alcohol, although if it's a little bit more of a party mood you might want to consider using vodka or tequila because then you could refresh yourself just as well as cleaning the tool. Um, anyway, so a little bit of rubbing alcohol here on a rag and then open up the jaw of the tool, get on in here and then we're going to polish the tool up a little bit because the bacterium that causes fire blight will transmit when you're cutting if you use dirty tools and you happen to cut through uh, the location where the disease was at and then go ahead and move it to the next stem you'll mechanically move fire blight through the tree. The easiest way to do this is have a partner out here somebody to clean the tools for you. In that case don't use tequila for cleaning the tools because they might be drunk before you get done but you clean the head on the tools up. All right. Otherwise you're going to spread it all over the place. So you can see right there. Um, see these were the flower buds where the bee came in. It was carrying the disease. It had picked it up in an infected plant somewhere. Maybe in my yard. Most likely in the neighbor's yard. Anyhow, uh, they picked up the fire blight somewhere. When they came to pollinate these apples, they transmitted it directly into the little stem there where the apples were growing, all right? And so that killed that shoot. But it's also visible right there on the side of the wood. You see the dark area. There'll be streaks under the bark as much as 12 inches down a healthy branch. In fact, here's another bud that's got it right here. And so that's below this one. So you should have at least about a foot between where you made the cut and where the last sign of the damage was to make sure that there is no fire blight still trapped inside the wood because it can be underneath here even though it doesn't show. To remind again, make sure that you are cleaning your tools between cuts when you're removing the fire blight because um, you don't want to spread it around. So here I got my uh, pruning shear and I got some rubbing alcohol on a rag here. Hmm. I think it smells better than the tequila I had last night with dinner. Okay, uh, there we go. Got them cleaned up. Right here behind me, right in this spot here, I have another branch loaded in fire blight. We can see here that the top actually died back. The apples are dying over there. And so we're going to take this entire shoot out of the tree, just like that. And then let you take a look at it here. You see how. Bees transmitted the disease in, it attacked the fruit, started spreading downward, killed the branch right next to it like that. So you want to make sure you get all this out of your tree as early as possible in the air. The longer it stays there, the uh, more it's going to spread through the plant, the more you're going to have to cut away. You get it early, small spots, it's really easy to control with a pruning shear. Uh, I don't use chemicals or bacteria ordinarily on fire blight. I just do this, cut it out. Seems to be the simplest thing to do. Um, anyhow, there we go. Uh, that's the June drop in apple trees here in late May in Fremont, California. How to watch for the frass coming out of the apples for the worms. Thinning them down so you get bigger loads of fruit, less bugs, and get rid of the diseases in your tree by pruning away fire blight. Thanks for watching here at the Green Garden Guys channel. Enjoy your apples. Mmm, mmm. Don't get no better than homegrown apples.